Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Richard Cohen. I'm the chief executive of Love Live. And um, this is a very big topic. As we've already heard, there's lots of different approaches that one could take. And so in speaking with Vijay, I uh, notionally thought that if we could speak to a, a very specific case study, take it away from the abstract, and try and relate that perhaps to, to your interests and your objectives, which I can only guess and imagine is to create interest and awareness to drive action or calls to action and, and have people either come to view the material in order to then discuss it with their friends and ultimately buy tickets perhaps and arrive at your venues. Some such, if that's just about right, then I'm in the right meeting, we're on the right track. Um, I also did wish to qualify with Vijay earlier that uh, whilst I've chosen McFly um, as a case study, because it's an incredibly interesting and notable digital case study as we'll kind of come to learn, come to learn in a second, um, being that we're in Sadler's Wells and it's theatre and very highbrow, I have also very recently made a film with Robert Plant, Roger Daltrey, we filmed The Pixies, Sonic Youth, but now we're going to speak about McFly. Um, so, the example uh, and what I've been sort of tasked to speak about is multi-platform content distribution and how that works both to drive traffic awareness and speak intimately and over a period with an audience and then bring about a series of calls to action that through engagement actually deliver money in whichever way that might be uh, a ticket to an event, an e-ticket, which we'll talk about as well as we go. So, Super City website, um, as you can see, the, the why is that hard at the beginning? That's where it should be. Um, the proposition, first of all, is about McFly. So McFly are interesting because they're not the biggest band in the world, but what they are is a band with a fanatical following and with an interest to engage. It's one thing to speak to a band who will allow you to run their website and their digital business. It's another entirely to work with a group of people who are willing and eager to engage with their fan base, and that's been all the difference with McFly. So they are interesting. They've had uh, seven number one singles. They're actually incredibly talented musicians, despite being a manufactured pop band eight years ago or so. They write their songs. Tom Fletcher's written ten number one hits in the UK, seven for McFly. Um, and as you can see, 18 consecutive top 20 singles, 23 major awards. The interesting thing here for me was always their digital fan base. So 800,000 Facebook followers and over a million Twitter followers. Um, it is not the biggest that you'll find in, in pop or, or music generally but it's significant and weighty enough, and we'll speak to what that means. Um, and what they have done significantly is establish the most uh, successful, lucrative, and profitable single artist direct consumer website. So what we're doing as Love Live is what you can see here in sort of the architecture and workflow. We'll produce content. Now in music, and I imagine not dissimilar in your domain, we consider exclusive content and premium content to be things which are either live, pre-release, or exclusive. And that's what's generally in music considered valuable beyond the ubiquity of music videos that you can find anywhere in the web. So what we do is create content, and that might be um, delivered via a webcast. It might be a simple web chat between the band and their friends and their fans. It may be capturing them on smartphones or professionally captured and created video. But it's all about capturing content that's going to be interesting to their fan base. When you've captured the content and produced that, we have technology that stands in between the database of fans and the various platforms to which we'll deliver the content. And in this illustration, you can see that we have filmed content that's then made available to a destination website, which would be McFly.com. It goes out to a branded Facebook application, which is incredibly important due to news feeds and the ability to then communicate outwards through friends referrals to the content that they are now buying into. And then, of course, mobile applications and tablets. So the first thing we did was establish a website. It is notable because in its first two days from launch, it generated over half a million pounds in premium content subscription. That's significant. And it's significant because they're not the biggest band in the world. And it was derived from annual subscription and monthly subscriptions, six pounds for monthly, 40 pounds for annual. And it was all about giving the fan base insight to their artists. And again, exclusive content is a mix between things which are live, pre-release, and exclusive to subscribers to the website. I was going to show video links, but we don't have that much time, and so I think you're all going to be able to take copies of these presentations, should you wish, and then you can click through and link through to the, the various videos attached. The next thing we did was decide to sort of challenge the fans and say, let's see what a pay-per-view event looks like. We know that the McFly band, we were following them 
uh, through their arena tour in the UK, they sold 60 or 70,000 tickets. So we know that there's an appetite and that there was a fan base. But we know that they have an international fan base as well. So how many of them would wish to see McFly playing live at Wembley? And so the idea was to take a live stream from the Wembley gig and make that available. The stats were really interesting because actually 75% of the e-tickets were purchased from Brazil, Japan, Spain, and the US. People who couldn't come to Wembley or any of the UK arena tours, even if they'd wanted. It was incredibly accessible, it was affordable, and the uptake was fantastic. We had about 45,000 uh, concurrent streams, which again is, is significant, not only in terms of revenue, but in terms of helping to establish the band as digital friendly and very much international on their appeal. The next thing we did for that same stream, if you're already creating content, then you want to make sure that it can be distributed as far and as wide as possible. So we created a, a series of mobile applications. Now these can be paid to download, they can be free to download, and then you can have micro billing where you've got a free app, but you pay for certain content that comes into the app. There's lots of different ways to cut it. But this was a study to find out, anecdotally or not scientifically, broadly, if you have a digital fan base, and by that I mean as simple as counting how many monthly active followers do you have on Twitter and how many friends do you have who are liking what you're doing on Facebook. It needs to be no more complex than that. And the stats that we've now found over a dozen projects, so by no means scientific, but certainly anecdotally it's interesting. We know that on a call to action to mobilize people to come and watch something that's streaming for free will typically convert 10% of an active monthly digital fan base. So if you've got a million followers on Twitter, you're going to get 100,000 people that you can take to do something for free. That obviously is reduced when you want to charge people, but again, the statistics are very interesting. And typically, it's between 25 and 4% who pay for something. Now, that's not across every sector, and of course, it matters your demographic and their age group and how prolific they are on the internet and how tech-savvy they are and the price points and how affordable. But you start to build a picture, and in the way that we've built one for music and our arena, I imagine that it wouldn't take very long or too many projects for you to establish the same sorts of stats that then give you the biggest free marketing channel imaginable, the likes of Facebook and Twitter, where you've got data capture and CRM, which is just easy and attainable. If you know ahead of time how many people you're going to be able to mobilize, that can inform your decisions as to what you invest, what you decide to produce and create, and I think that's very interesting. Um, the next thing we did was not forget about the TV screen. Because while the McFly fan base may be considered as TV's lost generation, television's actually very interesting. So we've got a TV series running at the moment on Channel 5 and 5 Star. Now, I didn't set out to make a TV series, because frankly, television production is a dying, archaic, and pretty competitive market that doesn't really allow you to make much money. But it is an opportunity for us to expand our dialogue intimately and over a period of six weeks with a much larger audience than those who are necessarily McFly fans. And when you communicate the right message in the right way across multiple screens, what we're seeing is really interesting redirects at the end of the TV show, where the show ends. It, it's, a, it's an observational documentary. It, it's not highbrow, but it's, it's, I think it's very professionally and very well made. It's compelling, it's interesting, and people all of a sudden get some insight to who the band are. At the end of the show, we end effectively the docu-soap, if you will, and then the screen goes a bit fuzzy, and up come McFly from Tom's garage doing a sort of a Wayne's World variation, if you will. And it starts with something as simple as a question, whereby the resolution comes through logging onto the internet. The spikes of traffic that we've been able to take off of television directly online, where you can continue to engage people with a compelling message, and then effectively take them on a journey, which you help to curate, I think translates very well, not only across the markets I'm working in, but I would imagine to yours as well. And so in practical terms, if we've learned anything at all, it's that fans would like to be engaged as, as deeply as they can be with the artists that they respect. And I imagine that's true of dance, of, of, of performance art, of, of music. And if you can create content, as has been said already, which is of a quality, and it doesn't mean that everything needs to be shot, um, at a tremendous cost. I think now there's an ability to create compelling content very cost effectively. So if you can create the content cost effectively you, and you have access to the talent, which for us has proven the key, if you have access to talent, potentially, and rights clearances are not prohibitive, if you can create teasers, you can take your audience 
and you can take them online. If you can take your audience online, you can take a utility site that may be designed to do nothing more than sell tickets. Not that that's unimportant. I'm sure that's incredibly important. But if you can add some video, then I know that I'm more likely to send that link to my friend saying, you should really check this out. I want to buy tickets. Will you come with me? If I send a link to buy a ticket, they might or they might not. If I send them a link to a piece of quality video that relates to the performance, they're not only more likely to look into it, they're then more likely to send it to their friends who'll send it to their friends, and then you get into Facebook and news feeds and the fact that it can simply blow up incredibly rapidly. Um, and so McFly, it took talent who were willing to engage, who were willing and able to make their rights available, so a progressive and forward-thinking record label as well, and publishers and all the rights associated with music. But they were happy to engage. We create high-quality content, and in four and a half months, we've generated over a million pounds in revenue. Now, that's not to say that every band can do it, and it's certainly not to say that any and every theatre can do it. But you can look at this as an example of how you can take something which is tried and tested. So bands have had websites and MySpace pages for, for many, many years. Nobody's ever made money. What's the difference here? I think that there's a series of steps that you can take to engage with your audience, and if you can speak with them in a very direct manner and make them aware of what you're trying to do and enter into a dialogue and hear back from your fan base or your consumers what it is that they want to see. We've not been prescriptive. We didn't come and say to our fan base, here you go, we hope you like it, buy it. We got into a dialogue. And Tom Fletcher's got 400,000 Twitter followers and he can mobilize kind of 20 or 30,000 of them with 20 minutes notice to go pretty much anywhere online. Speak to them, get into a dialogue, ask them what they would like to see. Do you want it to be two minutes or three minutes? Would you like to see more dance or do you want music and soundtrack? Do you want editorial or don't you? Ask them, they'll tell you. If you give them what they want, they'll come back, they'll tell their friends, and it's incredible how effective and how powerful it can be. I think that that was the last slide. We're done, thanks.